Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 149 of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, doing this one at the radio station today uh, because I'm... Dude, I forgot that I had... So, what happened, right? Last night, we recorded episode 150 live on stage. Awesome. Thanks to everyone who came. But I'm so stupid that I was like, oh, I've already, I'm recording a podcast on Saturday, so I don't have to do one this week. Nah, dickhead, episode 150 doesn't come out till next Sunday. So anyway, whatever, sorted it out, I'm at the radio station, and it still comes up on Sunday, so hey, fuck you, we're fucking two months into the year, and I've only had one late episode, so hey man, that's pretty fucking good, alright? Um, I've had a, had a good week, dude. As I said, the live podcast was fucking incredible. I'm not going to talk about it too much. I'll just let you guys, uh, experience it when it comes out, but it was a lot of fucking fun. We had Luke Kidgel, uh, of course, and we also had a surprise guest. Bunch of shit happened. A whole bunch of people dropped out. Couldn't get the guests that we originally happened and it wasn't anyone's fault. It was just fuck around with dates and touring and cruise ship gigs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, basically if, 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 uh, if you agree to do a gig with me, and then someone else is like, hey, why don't you do a gig with me? And you're like, oh, what's the difference between this gig and Lewis's gig? And the answer is generally, we'll pay you a reasonable amount. Then they'll go with that, and hey, go get that money, dude. I totally support it. So we had, uh, unfortunately, Ash fils couldn't show up uh, because he, he was booked for a cruise ship. Um and he, he says he's bummed that he missed out and he's sorry that he missed it and uh, he hopes that it was that it went well. Um, but we got Christian Hull on the podcast, which is great, and he's fucking hilarious. Anyway, man, I had a good week this week. I uh, main thing that I did, I saw the Jordan Peterson show. Uh, Dr. Jordan B. Peterson was in Melbourne uh, performing at the Melbourne Convention Centre to 5,500 people at $100 a ticket, just fucking raking in, what is that, half a million dollars in a night? Oh, so cool. Guys, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. I cannot wait until my tickets are $100. I can't fucking wait until my tickets... And I, I totally understand that that's like probably 15 to 20 years away, but the minute, the fucking minute, I can start charging $100 a ticket, oh, you don't know the kind of shit I'm going to do with that money, man. You have got no idea. That's some next level shit. When you're so popular that there's no longer venues big enough for you, right? So basically, if your tickets are $100, I always say this, if your tickets are $100, they're only that expensive because you have to kick people out of your price bracket because you have too many people who want to see you and there aren't venues big enough, you know? It's like, oh, 20,000 people will see me. The arena's booked out till 2021 because they're scheduled so far in advance. I guess I'll just do a 5,000-seater and I'll knock out 15,000 poor cunts. Fuck them. <laughs> That's what I really want, guys. I really want to get to the point where I can sell 20,000 tickets, but instead of doing that, I just sell 5,000 and a hundred dollars. Like, hey, hey, everyone, welcome. My name's Lewis Spears. I'm making half a million dollars tonight, and there are homeless people in the street. Have a good night. Yo, thank you very much. I'm going to buy my second Lamborghini because I'm doing five of these this week. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I would do with that amount of money, man. That's crazy. But hey, man, working my way up there. Tickets are $35 this year, and I earned that price, man. I'm stoked with that. That's a nice fucking amount where it's worth, you know, you get what you pay for, you you probably get a little bit more than you pay for, and everyone can afford that shit. And if you can't afford $35 tickets, sort out your life! I would... <laughs> That's what I always think. If, if very, very rarely people complain about the price of tickets. But one time, I think this was last year, my tickets were $30. So, you know, gave myself a little $5 increase, huh? Hey? Uh, I think my tickets were 30 bucks, and one guy was like, Dude, last year your tickets were $25. What the fuck? I just wrote, Hey, man. Last year, I was broke as fuck after the tour. 
because my tickets were $25. Work half an extra shift at Macca's and suck my dick and don't come to the show. You're not allowed to complain about ticket price until they're over $50, right? 50 plus, you can say, oh, oh, that's a little bit of an expense. But under that, not allowed to complain. Anyway, I paid $100 to see Jordan Peterson. And what the fuck? $100 for a ticket? That's so expensive, man. But fuck, it was good. Um, It was so fucking good, dude. It, and it was so funny, man. Um, it was so funny. We got to the convention center. It's like five and a half thousand people. So there's cunts everywhere, right? And what really surprised me about Jordan Peterson's audience, super diverse. There was like men and women of all races, all ages. There was like next to me, I, you know, I'm a 25-year-old straight white male. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oops. Um... But next to me was like uh, uh, a gay couple who were like 30 something. And then on the other side of me, there was uh, some dude from Canada, my age, I assume straight. But next to him was like an older couple of 50 something who were not white. I don't know where they were from, but it was it was really cool seeing how fucking diverse it was because I was kind of expecting it to be just like me and, and people like me. But it was, I mean, I guess, you know, that's fucking Australia, isn't it? We're just so diverse um man it was so fucking good if you get the chance i think he's coming back to he's doing more shows because he sold out definitely see him if you can afford the ticket price it's fucking so good he was on stage for two and a half hours by himself and it was so clear that he was just kind of making it up on the spot or talking about whatever he was passionate about so obviously it was themed around his book that he wrote um but it wasn't like him just restating chapters it was him talking about current things that had just happened and um it was just fucking it was so fucking incredible and i left that thing feeling so motivated to to not just succeed but but, but to be like a good contributing member of society uh, and then i blew it when i did episode 150 of the podcast and was just a giant cunt <laughs> um but no, man, it was it was honestly so good, and it's it was it was it's so frustrating to see. I saw the show, and I just the whole time all he talked about was the great potential for good that every individual human has. You know how how good we can be, not only as being productive and helping out society ourselves, but like just genuinely being nice and helping people and living a good life and and improving the circumstances upon which we live. It was like one of the most optimistic talks I've ever seen in my life. I don't go to many of these things, but it was so fucking optimistic. He just pointed out how good our lives are at the moment, how little problems we have compared to literally any other moment in history for the last million or however many fucking million years humans have been around. We live in the best time there is and every single day it gets better and better and better and cunts still complain. He wasn't talking about the complaining, but he was I don't know, it was just so fucking positive and it was and it just made me realize how good, you know, our lives are, how many opportunities there are around and, and how how you can really capitalize on that. All you need to do is accept that everything's your fault and fucking go. I swear, man, once I came to that realization that it's all my fault, it was like a switch in my head. I'm like, oh, if this is all my fucking fault. That means that I can fix it. And if I can't fix it, no worries. I'll fix the, the thing next to it. You know, every single problem in your life, you can fix just about. And for the few fucking horrible problems you can't, don't worry. Fix the thing next to them. I don't know. I don't want this to be a motivational podcast, but I, I felt really good. And uh, I was stoked that he came to Australia. And uh, I, I, I'm not gonna, I am not going to promise anything. I will make no promises, but we have reached out to the people doing his tour, the PR team. I've asked him to come on the podcast. We've sent a nice, lovely email. I have no promises, but uh, we'll see because I know that he's coming back to do a lot of press and uh, I know he does do podcasts and he loves comedy. So we'll see. I I found out that he showed up to an open mic gig that I do regularly. I wasn't there, um, which is a bummer, but hey, that's the luck of the draw. Um. So that was fucking awesome. And if you get the chance, definitely go and see him. It was like two and a half hours. At one point, he started to almost cry. 
<laughs> because he was just talking about how much potential humanity has for good, and he just started to choke up. And 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 when I when I when I saw him almost start to cry because he was so passionate about how good people can be and how we can all be positive forces for good. It just just made me think of all those fucking horrible cunts on Twitter that lie and call the dude an alt-right racist transphobe and all this kind of horrible horse shit. And it was like this little moment where I'm like, oh, they're definitely wrong. I saw the soul of that man on stage. You know, I saw his fucking soul. And uh, all it is is just him wanting everyone to to be a good human and do well with their life. And I think that's a very noble, beautiful thing. Uh, and it was very inspiring. And you should definitely go and see it. And he should definitely give me a fucking referral fee so I can make that hundred dollars back. I'm not. I'm not complaining. It was worth every fucking cent. What am I trying to do here? I'm looking for something. I want the little dude. My fucking laptop, I swear to God. I know you can't start yelling at me, Oh, why would you spend $2,000 on a phone? Why would you spend that much money on a laptop? Best decision I ever made, except for the fucking little USB thing that I don't have, man. And every time I need to plug my USB in, I need to get this fucking hub thing that also costs a shitload of fucking money. Because I wanted the good one. Because I don't fu- I don't buy cheap shit anymore. I've done that and I'm fucking over it. I don't buy cheap. I buy shit that lasts. Ooh, Apple doesn't last. Hey, suck my dick. <laughs> yes, it does. If you're, good, if you're careful with it. Oh, I can't find it. Whatever. I'm going to try and... Uh, what I need to do is I need to plug my camera in. Otherwise, the battery's going to die halfway through. I think there's like a PowerPoint underneath the desk. Guys, this is the point where I should pause the podcast, but I won't because I don't have enough respect for my audience. Some people do, but I don't. Going under the bench, plugging shit in because I should respect my fans, but I don't. I just don't respect them enough. Why the fuck doesn't this work? Oh my God. Okay. Oh, what's this plugged into? I'm in the radio station. If I unplug the wrong thing, this whole station goes off air. So here we go, rolling the dice. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay. Unplug that. I don't, okay. I haven't noticed any lights go off. Looks like it's all broadcasting. Not that I would know. Plugging in my thing instead of something potentially crucial to the operation of a radio station. Not supposed to be recording my podcast here, but I do it anyway because I don't respect my employer. And while I'm talking about things I don't respect, I also don't respect my audience. Because if I did, probably wouldn't be doing this. I'll be doing, I would pause it, do this, and then start it again. But instead, I'm doing it while I'm recording and pretending that it's a funny bit instead of what I actually just did. All right, we're back. All plugged in, ready to go. That's great. (laughs) Sorry for wasting your time, guys. What else did I do this week, man? Dude, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. The time has fucking come. Your boy got a fucking sponsorship brand deal alert. Brand deal. I got a fucking brand deal. Yes, sir, I did. Coming up very soon. Brand deal. Locked in. Paid for. Products to test on the way. Good products that I would actually fucking use and I actually think are cool. Awesome. So good. I've got brand deal for the YouTube, for my YouTube videos and for the podcast. So finally, the best part of the podcast can finally return. I think it must be 30 or 40 episodes since my last fucking brand deal, but it's finally coming back. The best part of the podcast just before Miss Lane's bit at the end is going to return. Not this episode, not next episode, but at some point. Just waiting for the products to arrive. And I told the guy if I don't... Hey, man, I'll do this, but if I don't like them, I'm not promoting it. So that's good. That's very, very good. I just spit coffee all over myself. Um, but that's good, man, because... Uh, I don't know. It's not very much money, but it's a start. I think instead I was like, oh, well, it's not much money, but I feel like I've never had a proper brand deal so that 
or often if brands reach out to me, they go, can you send us an example of how you do ads? And I'm like, I've never done it before. And then they, they're like, oh, okay, well, that's right. Maybe we can use you for a little bit. And then they watch three videos and they all start with cunt, cunt, cunt. And they're like, oh, maybe we'll go with uh, Shane Dawson instead. <laughs> maybe we'll go with someone else, hey? Um, so, fuck, dude, I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, they'll they'll be on board. I'm doing it, and uh, it'll be good because I really need a new microphone for the podcast because um, I want to get another one for guests and stuff. I mean, I can't have fucking. I mean, if 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 I pull off if I pull off and win the lottery and I actually get Jordan fucking Peterson in my warehouse, could you imagine that cunt bringing that cunt to my warehouse? I can't do that, can I? I'm gonna have to go to where he is. I can't fucking bring the man to the brothel capital of Victoria, literally. Read that in the fucking news. The brothel capital of Victoria. I can't take him there, can I? He'll be like, oh, I'm going to get murdered. Oh, that's why I'm here. I'm going to get murdered. Have you read Gulag Archipelago? No? Oh, is that a knife? Are you putting that in my fucking throat? Oh, that's not very good, is it? That's <laughs> that's my Jordan Peterson impression. That's not very good, but it's the best that I have. Oh. Clean your room. Clean your room. <laughs> before you <laughs> before you try to fix problems in other people's homes, fix the problems within your own. <laughs> what else did he say? No Bill C sixteen is compelled speech. I will not have a law of compelled speech in this country. That is the path to chaos. And I am and I am a force. I say we should all stand for order. And let me tell you something. If you read Gulag Archipelago, I know you wouldn't be happy with Bill C-16. I'm Jordan Peterson. I'm leaving Patreon and I'm starting up my own website. And hopefully if we raise enough money on my new crowdfunding website, we will be able to pay somebody else to do a better impression of me. Because this one isn't very good. In fact, the more you listen to this impression, the less it sounds like me and the more it sounds like Lewis talking normally in a high-pitched voice. Have you read the Gulag Archipelago? <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm sorry. I love him. But, man, he's got a ripper voice. It's so good. Um, Dude. What, what happened here? What did I want to talk about this week? Um, Man, I talked about this a little bit on the live podcast, but we didn't go into it at all too much. I've noticed that on... um. If you have a lot of friends that are like that are like lads or like ratty friends that are into like criminal shit, you start to notice that on Facebook, on Facebook especially, if if someone posts a photo right of them and they're looking nice, they're in new clothes and and you know they've put on a little bit of weight or whatever, and and if all of the comments say "looking healthy, bros," "looking healthy, bros," "bro, you're looking healthy," "brosy, you're looking healthy," that doesn't that doesn't actually mean they're looking healthy like they've been going to the gym or eating their vegetables. What that means is that they you they everyone knows that they do heroin or meth and they've just posted a, and now they've been using it less, you know? Not not stopped, but definitely less. Every time you see a fucking lad posting a photo and there's 30 comments of oh looking healthy, bros, all that means is that they've been doing meth less. <laughs> That's all that means. It's a fucking roller coaster, man, all this shit. Looking healthy, bros. All that means is he hasn't done heroin for a week. And you know what? That's about as uh, as far into it as we got in the live podcast, podcast as well. Hey guys, this is an observation that I've noticed. Anyway, that's it. <laughs> oh, bi monthly bull. It's coming back. Tuesday, man. Tuesday, Buy Monthly Ball's coming back. It's all written. We've set up the film space again. It's all ready to fucking go. I'm so keen for it. 
Um, I think it's really, really funny, uh, some of the jokes that I've written in there. So I'm real keen for it. And, and I would love if you guys would share it around, make a lot of noise and, and just be excited about it. Because I, I do think it's like a... It it's a it it should be a staple of my of my channel in my mind it is and I think it'll finally become that now that I've got um an editor and everything and I'm not gonna commit I think the the reason why bi monthly bull died because in my fucking perfectionist head which was which is this is the reason for the majority of my problems that I had last year with content in my fucking perfectionist head I was like I can't every single episode has to have a vox pop or an in person stunt or a thing with me on the street it fucking doesn't right those things should just be special because if I did do them every two weeks they wouldn't be very good at all because I would I would just be doing them because I have to do them so now I'm gonna do bi monthly bull and uh, not even gonna say how often. Whenever I have a good idea for a Vox Pop, I'll do them as often as I can, but it won't be every episode because I, I found myself not being able to write all of the other segments for Bi-Monthly Bull because I couldn't, I, I couldn't find a convention to go to or a protest to crash or an event uh, to, to, to you know, do a thing about or a news story that would be good as a question thing on the street. And I was like, it was just like stalling me. So I'm throwing out the Vox Pop thing as a as a rule and instead what I'll do is I'll make them more special and then that will allow me to chuck in first the shortened cut down version of the vox pop in bi monthly bull as a little segment and then a couple of days later put out the long full version of of just that as its own video which I think is a much better idea so bi monthly bull is going to come back on Tuesday I'm super fucking excited about it um and yeah, man, I've actually started working on a lot of new content that you guys haven't seen from me before and uh, may seem a little bit left of field, but I'm super keen for it. Very exciting shit on the way to you cunts. <clears throat> I also found out, dude, I also found out that, uh, <laughs> do you guys remember quite a few podcasts ago, I was talking about the fucking Migos song where Quavo goes, I'm going to Google it. I'll, I'll find out what the song is, right? Quavo goes extra pussy for my assassin. And I was like, dude, okay, let me just Google this. So I'll get it up. For my assassin. Lyrics. Is that gonna, here we go. Yeah. Meek Mill, ball player. Ball player, ball player. Um, assassin. Here we go, right? So, dude, I found out. I thought this whole time, this cunt was saying, extra pussy for my assassin. Extra pussy for my assassin. He was saying the whole time, extra percent. So this whole time, fucking Quavo, I thought, was giving out pussy to all of his employees. Some pussy for my cleaner. Bit of pussy for my accountant. Some pussy for my tax guy. Little pussy for my chef. Some pussy for my kids. A bit of pussy for my wife. Some pussy for my producer. A little bit of pussy for the guy who designed my merch. Some pussy for the guy who did my t-shirts. Some pussy for my stylist. A bit of pussy for my other chef. I don't know why I've got two. A bit of pussy for my cat. You could say pussy for my pussy. A bit of pussy for my hairstylist. A bit of pussy for my masseuse. A bit of pussy for the guy who did my lights. A bit of pussy for my plumber. A bit of pussy for the guy who fixed my door last week. A bit of pussy for the for the guy who sold me a camera and gave me 10% off because he likes my music. A bit of pussy for, my, for the prostitute I bought pussy from. A bit of pussy for some strippers. A bit of pussy for my jeweler. A bit of pussy for Louis Spears. A bit of pussy for this bit. It's going on for too long. <laughs> right? That's, by the way, that was the hottest freestyle of 2019. <clears throat> I want to see that written up in fucking fader. Um, yeah, I, this whole time I thought he was saying extra pussy for my assassin. Someone just messaged me and said it was, they looked up the lyrics, which uh, uh, I should have done in the fucking first place. Uh, it's extra percent for my assassin. So he, so he just, pa he just remunerates his employees accordingly to how they do their job. So... I mean, good on Quavo for being a responsible employer. Oh, you you killed two people instead of one? Extra percent, man. 
oh, what the fuck? I thought you were saying pussy. No, sorry. It's actually extra percent for my chef. Extra percent for my hairstylist. Extra percent for the guy who fixed my door last week. Extra percent for my for the dude who fixed my locks. Extra percent for my plumber. Extra percent for my bit. Extra percent for this bit. It's going on for too long. Again, <laughs> times two. So that was a good fucking thing to learn, huh? Um, I think this one, this podcast is going to be a little bit, uh, I got to end it a little bit early because I got to go start planning the radio show very soon. Hear all that shit about 6 9 dude? You know, Takashi 6 9 how he's going to, how the dude, <laughs> the dude's 22, he could be doing 47 years, so when he comes out, he'll be 69. That's amazing, right? So good. It's like the numbers are aligning. I, I didn't think numerology was real. Is that what they call it? What's that astrology shit, but it's numbers? I don't know. Numerology. But that's crazy, man. That's actually a real shame. The dude got fucking caught up in the life. See, you know what? Why, whenever whenever rappers are talking about, oh, all you fake gangsters out there are all bitches, I just think, no, I think um, I think they're just smart. I think they're just smart people. Because I would say that if you sell drugs and then you went on a song and was was like, Hey, everyone, I just smell, I just sold drugs. Hey, everyone, I just sold drugs on the corner of 7th and 1st Street. I sold, I sold 10 grams of cocaine to Jimmy Two Shoes and he paid this much for it and this is where I live and this is where I keep it, everyone. If you did that but you made it rhyme, you know, for some reason that makes you cool instead of a fucking idiot. You know, it's just snitching on yourself. It's like, that's, that's, that's why I always thought that shit was the dumbest shit. And it, it, what's funny is that it turns out the realest gangster of them all was some fucking idiot with rainbow hair and numbers tattooed all over his body. Like he was some shit character in a B grade action movie. You know, Takashi 69, you know, you know, 69 is Takashi 69 is when is what happens when uh, a, a, a te- a, like an average comic book writer starts writing Batman and, and thinks they've come up with the new Joker, you know, like they create a new villain and they think it's so fucking cool and so fucking edgy that it's going to immediately become one of the most popular villains out there. But in reality, it's everyone just goes, I don't know, man. It just looks like a fucking stupid joker with number tattoos all over him, man. Reminds me of one of reading comics. I was reading comics and someone came up with the Joker's daughter. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to read that one. I like comic books, but I'm not going to read that one. Oh, the Joker's daughter? Is that like the Joker, but it's, but she's a woman? I'm not going to read gender swap fan fiction with a DC logo attached to it. I'm going to skip that one. Thank you very much. Why don't you come up with your own fucking villain that isn't just Joker with a pussy? What does she do? Ah, <laughs> you fallen into my trap, Batman. I told you I didn't want anything for Valentine's Day, but actually I did. And now I'm angry at you. <laughs> You've fallen into my trap. And then Batman goes, ah, we've been gone again, Robin. Wait. Robin, are you fucking the Joker's daughter as well? Well, yes, I, I mean, well, yes, I am, Batman. After all, the Joker's daughter is only 14, like me. Are you fucking the Joker's daughter? Well, as we all know, the best way to, to defeat your enemy is to fuck their 14-year-old daughter. I'm sorry, is that... Is that how you've been fighting crime, Batman? By... F- by fucking everyone's daughters. They don't call me the Dark Knight for nothing. Why do they... Why do they call you the Dark Knight, Batman? Because I fuck everyone's daughter, Robin. Oh. What does... What does that have to do with being a Dark Knight? I don't know, but they started calling me that around the same time. Could be a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> On second thoughts, it's probably a coincidence they call me the Dark Knight because of my costume and maybe nobody knows about me fucking all the daughters yet. I probably shouldn't have told you, Robin. All right.
party, Batman. Hope you're wearing a bat condom. <laughs> All right. Let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end, shall we? Um, before I do get into miscellaneous bit at the end, I wanted to say, uh, Patreon supporters, you guys are going to be getting, uh, some exclusive content very soon. So I've been trying to work out the best way to grow my Patreon and what I can do to give back to the people supporting me on Patreon beyond the shit they already get, which is, um, in terms of content, early access to everything I do, which is really good. But I've been playing with a few ideas on what can I give to Patreon supporters that will only be on Patreon. What can I do that'll be really fucking good and will only be seen by those guys. And uh, I've got a lot of uh, shit coming up. I've got a lot of good ideas that I will uh, announce towards the end of this month. That'll be starting in March. So around March... Um, some exclusive Patreon-only content is going to be coming out, and I'm um, very fucking excited about it. We're working away very hard on, on it at the moment, and uh, I think you guys are going to be fucking stoked with it. So if you've ever considered becoming a Patreon supporter uh, before, or if you were a supporter and you stopped doing it for any reason, jump back on board now because it's a fucking great time to get on board and... Um, I'm, I'm really trying to grow the Patreon and give back to the people supporting me because I really want to do some big things with that money. I want to start uh, recording more live podcasts. I, want, I need to get more camera gear. I want to upgrade the camera that I film this podcast on because this one uh, is basically the bare minimum, but the next step up is very expensive. So I really am trying to grow the Patreon so I can improve everything that I'm doing. And I really want to bring on my editor more than twice a week. I just can't afford to at the moment. It just doesn't make sense. So um, Patreon is how I'm going to do that. So if, you, if you've ever considered becoming a Patreon before, uh, now is the fucking time to do it. Um, because I got a lot of great shit coming that I'm very excited for. And uh, you're going to get some exclusive Patreon-only shit, which I will be announcing probably uh, in the next couple of podcasts. So we'll do the live one, and then episode 151, I'm telling you, man, it's a new fucking era for Lewis Spears. All right. But before that, we need to get into the last bit of the podcast. So hopefully you cunts don't kill yourself uh, or sign up to Patreon and then end it because um, I'll just get your payments until the bank closes your account to pay for the funeral. All right, Lewis, you ruined my orgasm. <laughs> hey, Lewis, I just wanted to let you know how you have personally ruined an orgasm of mine. Well, uh, if, if, there's any, if there's anything I'm happy to do, it's to fuck up your cum. Um, so me and my husband are both fans of the podcast, and we both listen to the bit with the lovely uh, porn star squirting her fluids all over the escalator. A classic Lewis Spears episode, which, by the way, is available now on Patreon and got my entire fucking page age-restricted because I didn't censor it and I tagged it with not safe for work. So thank you very much for that, Patreon. Now, every time you try and sign up, it looks like I'm a fucking selling nudes or some shit, like all those Instagram thoughts, but I'm just trying to show you guys what it looks like when a porn star squirts on an escalator, and I don't have to censor it because YouTube are a bunch of pussies. So, you know, fair enough. Actually, now that I think about it, you probably should say my shit's 18 plus because I'm literally posting porn on there. So, I take it back and I'm very sorry for yelling. That was a bit of an overreaction. Anyway, back to the email. So, me and my husband are both fans of the podcast, uh, and we both listen to the bit with the lovely porn star squirting all over the escalator. <clears throat> Fast forward a little bit, we were having sex in the bedroom, and not once, but twice does my husband mimic that porn star's cry of, of pleasure. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Dude, i got to do that to uh, anyone who will let me, basically. Uh, but he waits for me... Waits for waits until I'm about to bust and then loudly does it again. Ah! Oh! Cutting my pleasure short very quick. Are you sure you didn't? <laughs> I thought you care for a short and sweet story. Have a shit one. Well, that's made my day. You know, I fucked up your sex life. That's great. <clears throat> that's fucking hilarious. Um, what else? We got another email. Uh, where the fuck are we? 
Softcore revenge story. Here we go. All right. Hey, Lewis. <clears throat> Long time no see. I haven't read this one yet. I need to fucking scream this. Uh, Long t- I haven't emailed you. Ah, oh, fuck, man. Hey, long time no see. I've emailed you <coughs> a few times in the past about other questions, but in your last podcast, you were asking for revenge stories. And while I don't think this story has a massive explosive... Hello? Sorry. Radio team's yelling at me. Ah, oh, they're trying to do stuff. Come in if you want. Hello? Hey. Just doing my podcast. Welcome. Are you using this? No. no, I'm not using it. You're going to drag us upstairs for the... Yeah, sweet. I'll be done in a minute. That's right. You want to say anything to the podcast listeners? Uh, follow me on Instagram. Oh, I hate that. See, that's our, that's our new button push. He's doing the same shit Radio Mike does. What is with you cunts on Instagram? He's ah, he's also our producer. Executive producer. Executive producer. Same thing. <laughs> Just really fucking offended him. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm sorry. I've got to cut it there. We need to start planning the uh, radio show. Thank you very much for listening. I will see you guys very soon. Um, next Sunday, <coughs> next week is the episode 150 live on stage. It's going up early on Patreon, probably Monday or Tuesday. And, um, it'll, it's, it's so good, man. Like it's some of the most fun I've had on stage. I was actually texting Luke about it today cause we did it last night. Um, and what did he say? He said, uh, he said, man, that was so good. Everyone loved it funniest shit we've ever done um and yeah it was just fucking i don't know just another level definitely the best live on we've done so thanks to everyone who came and uh, it's coming out on sunday or early monday tuesday if you're a patreon supporter so yeah so support me on patreon guys now's the fucking time to do it i got some exclusive shit coming which i'll announce uh two podcasts from now all right thanks for listening i will talk to you next sunday and i hope you have the world's shittest one.